for any man to be in sin. Christ has come 2,000 years ago or more. And he has taken away that excuse that man has. That we all sinners. And we all got to sin because we just flesh. We're saying that's not true, friends. Christ has come to take away that excuse that man used to have. He came to give you power, grace, to overcome sin today. So there is no excuse for any man to be in sin, friends. You need to turn from that fornication that you love so much. You need to turn from the adultery that you love so much. You need to turn from that homosexual lifestyle that you love so much. You need to turn from that lesbian lifestyle that some women love so much. We're saying God is not pleased with your sin. He is coming back to judge the world of his sin. We're saying give up your life in this world, friends. We're saying turn from your sins today. Have faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are the church of the living God. The only true church that has been established by Christ himself. Don't be deceived by the Catholic Church today. Don't be deceived by the Baptist Church today. Don't be deceived by the Methodist Church today. They're all abiding in sin. The preachers are in sin. The Catholic priests are molesting your little boys. But you still continue to support them. We're saying turn from your sins today. Have faith in Jesus Christ. That's why we're here to the friends. To let you know there is only one way to God. It's not through the Baptist Church. It's not by way of the Methodist Church. It's not by way of the Catholic Church. It's only one true church, friends, that have been established by Christ himself. That's the church of the living God. And that's why we're inviting you today. Those of you who have faith, those of you that have a desire to live holy and sanctified, we are here today preaching for you. We know everyone can't be saved. Everyone can't believe in Jesus Christ. Scripture says many are called, but few are chosen. And the Lord knows why he's saying that. Because there are so many people who love their sin so much. Scripture says they drink it down like water. They just can't abstain from their fornication. They love to fornicate. Some men can't abstain from adultery. They love to cheat on their wives. And some women are the same. They love to cheat on their husband. But we're saying God is coming back again to judge the world of those sins, friends. And we're saying that time when he comes again, you don't want to be in sin. And that's why we're here today warning you just like Noah warned the people over 4,000 years ago that God was going to destroy the world by water. And nobody believed. What we're saying today, friends, Christ is going to come again to judge every man, woman, and child for what they have done in their bodies in these last days. We're saying turn from your sins today. Repent and be baptized for the remission of your sins. We're saying if you have a desire to serve God in holiness and righteousness, we're inviting you to come and have fellowship with the church of the living God. The only true church 
that have been established by Jesus Christ himself. At this time we give space to another speaker. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank the Lord for the word of God being spoken unto you today, men and brethren. Words of life and edification that can truly set you free from sin in these last days. And we're telling you today, by the grace of God, if you have ears to hear, don't harden your heart to what the Lord is saying. Because whether you young, men and brethren, or whether you're old, like we always say, you have to give an account for what you've done in your body. And you're going to have to pay for what you've done in your body. And if you work in sin, if you work in unrighteousness, the Lord, he cannot receive you in these last days. The Lord, he can't receive a sinner, men and brethren. The scripture tells me that God is angry with the sinner all the day long. But if you want to live righteous, if you really want to serve God, this is the way that you have to come. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ tells us that if any man want to come after me, let him deny himself and let him take up his cross and follow me, men and brethren. Now you got to have some understanding of what it truly means to deny yourself. Because you're not going to hear that in the false churches or these false preachers that's preaching for money. They preach it to you smooth words to fill up their church or to make you feel good so that you can continue to pay for their new car. That you can continue to pay for their new house. That you can continue to fill up their pockets and make them feel good, men and brother. We're not going to tell you smoother words like that. We're going to preach to you the truth. We're not going to sugarcoat it or water it down so it might be easier to digest. But we're going to tell you the truth by the grace of God. The scripture tells us that whosoever committed sin is of the devil, men and brother. And the devil sinned it from the beginning. But in this you know that the Son of God was manifest to destroy the works of the devil. That's what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ came to do, to destroy the work of the devil. And the work of the devil is in men's flesh today. It's when men can't be faithful to their wife. They're in all kind of adultery, all kind of fornication, all kind of lust. They're lusting after every woman that walk by. Everything with a skirt, they got to look and they got to lust in their heart and undressing women with their eyes, men and brother. That's the work of the devil in men's flesh today. That smoking cigarettes, that drugs and liquor bottles they can't put down, that cursing and swearing in their mouth. You know the works of the flesh, men and brother. You know your own body. Every man has a conscience. He knows what's right and what's wrong, men and brother. And that sin and that is the work of the devil in men's flesh today. And the Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ, he came to give men power that they shouldn't live in this life anymore. They shouldn't live that life of sin anymore. But that they should be made free from all sin. That you can live holy. That you can live righteous in your flesh. He came to give us liberty. Because when you're in sin, the devil, he has you bound. He has you in bondage. And you don't, you don't have no liberty. You don't have any free will today if you're still in sin. But if you believe on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he came to set men free from all sin, that you shouldn't live that life of sin anymore. I hear 1 Corinthians telling us that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. Because a lot of people, they go to church, and they say they're born-again Christians, but they're still remaining in sin. They're still remaining in the lust of their flesh. It's because their preacher is not preaching unto them truth, men and brother. Your preacher is not preaching unto you about this life free of all sin. He's not preaching to you about God's true plan of salvation. But men and brethren, this is the will of God. I hear the scripture telling us. This is the will of God that you believe on him in whom he has sent. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ tells us that if any man want to come after him, he got to deny that life of sin in his flesh, that life of lust, that life of pride, that life of being all that you can be in the flesh, going for your education in the flesh to find some kind of gain for your own life, men and brother. But the scripture tells me to, that if you want to follow our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you have to lose that life of sin in your flesh in order to serve God. This is the only way that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ can receive you. A lot of people, they're deceived in these last days. 
But I hear the scripture in Matthew chapter 4, 24 telling us, let no man deceive you. Many false prophets, they're going out into the world. They're deceiving many. But men and brethren, we're telling you, don't let any man deceive you today. He that doeth righteousness is righteous even as Christ is righteous. But he that doeth not righteousness is not of God, men and brethren. This is the word of God. This is that word which we have heard from the beginning. That our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gave since the beginning. He said, God is light and in him is no darkness at all. So if you're saying you have fellowship with God, if you're saying you go to church, you shouldn't be walking in darkness either. That's what our Lord is, that's what it means to be a true Christian. That's what 1 John chapter 1 tells us. That if we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we're lying and the truth is not in us. But if we walk in the light, if we live in holy, and we live in righteous, and we live in godly, as Christ is living holy, righteous, and godly, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ is going to cleanse you from all sin. That's what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that's why he did the work that he did on Mount Calvary's cross. A lot of people look at it as a story, as a smooth story. They go to church. They commit all the sin they want all throughout the year. They wait until holiday time to go to church one day out of the year to hear a smooth story about how Christ died on the cross. But men and brethren, the purpose of why our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did this is so that we shouldn't remain in sin anymore. Even as you hear the signs, you see the signs, and you hear the ministers preaching, it says it is possible to live a life free of sin. Men and brethren, it is possible for young men, they don't have to be sleeping around. They don't have to be looking and lusting with their eyes and abiding in fornication, sleeping with every woman, every woman sleeping with every man. It is possible to live holy in your flesh today. But you got to have faith. I hear the scripture saying, who has believed our report? A lot of people, they like to go down that wide, broad way of the Baptist way or the Catholic way or the Methodist way because it's more easy or more convenient for them. But men and brethren, this straight and narrow way that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ prescribed, you got to live a life free from all sin. You can't live that life of sin anymore. And that's the power that's in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And a true minister of God, he will preach to you about God's true plan of salvation and how you can be set free from sin. He's not going to tell you we all have sinned and we all come short of the glory of God. Men and brethren, that excuse isn't in effect anymore because God came down and shed his most precious holy blood that we shouldn't be in sin anymore. A lot of men, they like to say, oh, there's none righteous, no, not one. That may be under the law, there was none righteous. No, not one. But now that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ came, he said as many as believe on him, to them he will give them power to become the sons of God. Men and brethren, who want to have faith and believe in this gospel today? Come and have fellowship with us, because truly our fellowship is with the Father, with his Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen, men and brethren. Amen, men and brethren. Hear the word of the Lord today. We are church of the living God. We're out here in your community preaching the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We're out here, as the minister said before me, commanding every man, woman, and child to repent. Repent of your sins. Some of you might say, well, preacher, I've already repented. I've already been baptized. I'm already saved. But our question to you today is, are you still living in sin? Amen. See, a lot of people today, they're saying they saved. They're filled with the Holy Ghost. But when you go into their lives, they're still in sin. And we're saying sin is the universal language of the world. No matter what religion you go to, no matter what faith you go to, they all have that confession that they're still sinners. And that's why we're out here saying no. God wants you to repent of your sins and turn from your sins. That's why we're out here today, men and brethren. 
We're not out here to collect any money. We're not worried about your money today. But we're out here for the saving of the soul. See, that's the problem with men today, men and brethren. They go to church for the wrong reasons. Some, they, they shop for churches like they shop for their groceries. They pick and choose what they like to hear. Some, if they're married two and three times, they're going to go to a church that allows adultery. But we're saying today that the true church of God, you can't shop for it like some groceries. Some men and women, they go to church to find women. They're going to church for fornication. They say that's a good place to find clean women. We're saying today that the church of God is not a social club. The church of God is not a place to pick up women or men. We're saying today that the church of God is the body of Jesus Christ. See, men, through traditions today, men and brethren, they go to church because their parents took them to church, but they're not looking for that salvation. we like to take you to Isaiah chapter 55. See, the Lord is looking at men's heart today. Why are you going to church today? Do you really want to be saved? Do you really want to be set free from your sins? Or are you looking for some good feeling in the flesh? Some people shop for churches based on a choir. If you don't have a good choir, they don't want to join the church. Are you going to church for some music? But are you going to save the soul today? We're saying God is not interested in how good your choir is. Most of those choirs, the sisters are pregnant with no husbands. That's not the church of God. Isaiah chapter 51 said, Ho, everyone that thirsteth. And that's why we are here, men and brethren. We're looking for those that's thirsting for righteousness. See, the true way of holiness today, God wants those that want to worship Him in spirit and truth. The true worshipers of God. They don't serve God with mouth service. They don't say something good about God. And I heard the minister say, go out to church and smoke their cigarettes. We're out here looking for those that want to be saved from the heart. Come ye to the waters. And he have no money. See, the, the, the false prophet, he wants your tithes, men and brethren. He's make a money enterprise of this word. We don't want a dollar, men and brethren. We're interested in your soul today. You see this true living word of God. You don't need no money today. And come ye buy and eat. Come and buy wine and milk. And without money and without price. We're saying today that the world think that godliness. That gain, thank you Jesus. Is godliness. That all you got to do is get all the toys. All you got to do is get a good job, get a good house, a nice car, and you made it. But I hear the scripture says, what profit if a man gained the whole world and then he loses his own soul? What does it profit today? We're saying today that men are in sin. That's what's been separating men from God. Let's go all the way back from the beginning. In the time of Adam and Eve, God said the day that you put your hand to that sin, the day that you will disobey my voice, you shall surely die. And we're saying today that men have been dying all the way back from Adam. We're saying today the world is afraid of Ebola because the death rate is so high. They're so afraid of a disease called Ebola. But we're saying the worst disease is sin. Sin is in your flesh today. We're saying Adam and Eve cause men to die in sin. We're saying today the antidote for your sins is God's grace. But the false prophet, they think the grace of God is a credit card. That they can just charge up sin and do whatever they want. We're saying that's a lie from the false prophet.
got perfect attendance. Uh, but we're saying today, uh, if you're not living godly in your flesh, uh, you're spending your money for something that don't profit. Uh, you're spending your time uh, for something that don't profit. Uh, we're saying today, uh, if you're in a Baptist religion, uh, you're spending your time for something that don't profit. You might say, Minister, that's some hard words. I've been born a Baptist. My father was a Baptist. My grandfather was a Baptist. But we're saying if the Baptist religion is not the truth, it don't matter. We're saying that God said he that cometh up another way, the same as a thief and a robber. We can boldly say today that the Baptists are not going the prescribed way. We're saying living a life free from sin, you being baptized, becoming a new creature. That's the only way one can be saved. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which satisfy him not? You got a lot of good Catholics. They do a lot of missionary work. Even Mother Teresa, she went and slept on the floor. They do a lot of good work. But if you in false religion, the scripture says it don't profit. Your labor is in vain. We're seeing today the only church that God established is church of the living God. That's the pillar and ground of the truth. That's the only religion that can take you out of sin today. Hearken diligently unto me. Some of you might be offended. Some of you might say who you think you are. But we're saying the Lord said the day you hear my voice, I'm harden not your heart today. We're saying if you hear a true man of God, say you got to come out your sins and that word of God prick your heart today. We're saying come and learn of this righteousness. And eat ye that which is good. And let your soul devote delight, thank you Jesus, itself in fatness. See, the fatness of the Lord is you living righteous and holy in your, this present world. But the world, they only preach gain. What you can do for yourself. Don't you have the biggest, nicest clothes? But we're saying today that God taught men that if you come this way, you're going to deny yourself. You got to pick up your cross. Some of these churches, they don't even preach the cross of Christ. Amen. They preach a Jesus without a cross. Amen. See, their Jesus allowed him to go to church on Sunday and then go to the nudie bar on the weekend. Amen. See, Christ, he has a cross today. You got to pick up the cross of Christ. That means put your flesh to death. The things that your flesh would, you got to put it to death. But the Catholics, they don't have the cross of Christ. The Methodists, the Seventh-day Adventists, they want to put you under the law. Paul said, ye that want to be under the law, do you not hear the law? It said, none righteous, no, not one. The law condemneth men and brethren. But we're saying today the true Sabbath of God is for you to rest from your works. The Lord wants you to rest from your sins. He don't care if you rest from your carnal job on a Saturday. The flesh think it's righteous because it don't pick up nothing on Saturday. But it'll wake up Sunday and go and sin. But we're saying the true Sabbath of God is for you to rest from sin. Cease from those sinful works. See, only the true religion of God, it can dispel and cast down all false religion. You might say, well, you sound like a church basher. We don't bash church, men and brethren. We bash lies from the false prophet. We bash man-made religions and all these falsely so-called cults. The Jehovah Witness, they can't be on the right path. They don't even preach Jesus. God is not offering up sacrifices for Jehovah. The only name that you can be saved is Jesus Christ. So the Jehovah Witness, they can't be of God. We're saying today only the Spirit of God can rightly divide the word of truth. Don't be spending your money for something that don't profit. See, the, man, the, the false prophet, he got you spending all your money. He giving you that false hope. But the true church of God is going to tell you the truth, men and brethren. Wherefore, you do spend money for that which is not profit. Incline your ear 
you can know a life free from sin. A man and God will declare it to you. A man and God will show it to you. We're saying we are witnesses today that it is possible to live a life free from sin. We're saying today we're witnesses that you don't have to be bound by the devil anymore. We're witnesses that even in this adulterous and sinful nation, men can live holy. Young men don't have to commit fornication. In our church, we don't have boyfriends and girlfriends. We believe in marriage. Our, our members, thank you, Jesus, they don't put away their spouses and marry again. See, that's the true church of God. But someone might say, well, that don't sound like a church I want to be a part of. Where's the party? I want to be able to listen to some good music. But we're saying God didn't come so you can come and dance to some music. He came to bring a sword, he said, for those that in sin. We're saying today that God is coming back. And if you're still found in sin, you're going to be in trouble, men and brother. See, the true church of God, they're going to tell you the truth. They're not going to sugarcoat it, men and brother. They're not going to say, peace to your sins. They're not going to say, come as you are. See, these are social clubs. These are not churches. Social clubs want to fill up the seats. But the true church of God, they're going to tell you the truth. That you need to repent of those sins and come out those sins. And learn of God's grace. That's the power to keep you from the sin. That's what the true church is going to tell you. But who is thirsting for that righteousness? Who is tired of serving the devil today? Who is sick and tired of sin today? See, you got to love righteousness. You got to hate the devil today. That's what we're looking for, the lost sheep of Christ. You that at the sound of my voice, if you're tired of being chained by the devil, liberty is on your street corner today. Grace is on your street corner today. We came to proclaim liberty, to preach the gospel to the poor today. Who have ears to hear? Let them hear. Amen. Amen, my brother. We're from Church of the Living God. We're located on your street corner today to preach unto you the true and unadulterated word of God. We're telling you today, men and brother, we hope that you were edified in the previous words that you've been hearing today. Because we're telling you today, we don't want any of your money. Amen. But the scripture tells us that as we have freely received this word of God from a true apostle of Jesus Christ, so we should freely give this word, men and brother. And we're out here laboring to do just that, men and brother. We're out here to save souls in these last days. We're telling you, men and brother, you have to labor to repent today. For the kingdom of heaven is truly at hand, men and brother. We're telling you, you have to labor to repent from your sins before it's too late. Every breath that you breathe in today in this earth, God is giving you another chance at life, men and brother. God is giving you another chance to repent. And we're telling you today, the scripture tells me that the day that you hear the voice of God, don't harden your hearts, men and brother. Don't continue to be stiff-necked as the children of Israel also were in the days of provocation, men and brother. They continue in their sins and continue to provoke God, men and brother, to jealousy. They continue to whore after other gods, men and brother. But we're telling you there's only one God in these last days, men and brother. One Lord, one faith, and one baptism. And that one God, men and brother, is commanding all men everywhere to repent from their sins today, men and brother. God is commanding all men to come out of their sins today, men and brother. And one scripture tells me 
that if you don't repent, men and brethren, there is judgment for sin in these last days. You cannot escape the wrath of God as long as you are abiding in sin, men and brethren. The false prophet loves to tell you that peace, peace to your sins. You're going to be all right in your sins, men and brethren. But we're telling you today that that is not so. We're telling you, do not be deceived by these false prophets in these last days, my brother. We're telling you, one scripture says that many false prophets have gone out into the world today, and they shall deceive many, my brother. And we see that that has truly taken place in these last days. There's many false prophets, many brothers, that went out and started their own doctrine, many brothers, to suit their own flesh. They didn't want to be subject to the true word of God, many brothers. They didn't want to be subject to God's commandment. So they go out from us, many brothers, and they ensure that there are not others because they went out from us. Because they don't want to be subject to God's word, men and brothers. They went and made their own doctrine to suit their own flesh, men and brothers. They go out and they make a business out of the word of God. The word telling you today, men and brothers, as we freely receive this word of God, we also labor to preach this word of God unto all you that are willing to receive this word, men and brothers. All you that are willing to humble yourself, to give up your life in this world, men and brothers. We're telling you this is the only way that you can see God's face in peace. You cannot be saved in your sins, men and brothers. The false prophet loves to preach peace, peace to your sins, brothers. But we're telling you there is judgment for sin in these last days. We're saying all you that love to drink liquor bottles, men and brothers, God gives the flesh the roses of the liver. We're telling you all you that love to indulge in fornication and adultery, we're telling you God put AIDS, men and brothers, as you see these men that wants to that wants to glorify their own flesh, men and brothers. They don't want to give God the glory, but they want to glorify their own flesh, and God turns their mind over to reprobation, men and brothers. And then all these AIDS and all these sexually transmitted diseases are continuing to kill men every single day, men and brothers. We had the previous minister speaking about death entered into the world because of sin in these last days, men and brothers. Before sin, there was no such thing as death, men and brothers. There was no such thing as suffering and pain and agony. But sin, men and brothers, what Adam disobeyed God's word, this is when sin and men began to die, men and brothers. Because every thought and imagination of man was only evil, continually. But what I'm telling you, if you labor to repent from your sins today, men and brothers, and labor to come to Christ in these last days, labor to obey God's voice in these last days. The scripture says, the day that you hear my voice, don't harden your hearts, men and brothers. But receive this word and let it sink deep down into your heart today. We're telling you to judge this word within yourselves and see whether it be the truth of God or not. One scripture tells me to try the spirits, men and brothers, and see whether they be of God. We're telling you, you are under false prophets today if they're telling you that you're all right in your sins. Because we're telling you, God hates sin, men and brothers, and he will against sin from the foundation of the world. Ever, ever since creation, men and brothers, 
God has always hated sin. And this is why men are dying today, men and brothers. But we're telling you, as long as you have breath in your body, God is giving you another chance to repent today, men and brothers, and come back to God. This is what we're laboring to do out here today, men and brothers. To labor to reconcile this word back unto our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is our sole purpose in the earth today. The false prophets love to preach that God paid it all, men and brethren. But we're saying that is not so. God has left a work for each and every one of us to do on this earth today. And that work is surely not sin, men and brethren. God hates sin. And he hated sin from the foundation of the world. The word saying, as long as you continue to abide in sin, you are going to continue to abide under God's judgment, men and brothers. There is judgment for sin. You have all these sexually transmitted diseases killing men every day, men and brothers. You have cancer for those that love to smoke cigarettes. We're saying the flesh loves to drink sin down like water, men and brother. The flesh loves their sin. And that's why they don't want to hear this true word of God. Because they want to continue to feel comfortable in their sins today. But we're not here to sugarcoat the word of God, men and brother. We're here to preach unto you the true and unadulterated word of God which is able to save your soul from hell, men and brethren. And we're telling you, there is truly power and grace from God, men and brethren, to live that life free from all sins in these last days. It is possible, men and brethren. This is why God came on the earth, men and brethren, came into flesh and blood, and suffered such an agonizing death, men and brethren, to give us this grace, to give us this power that we can say no to sin. God's sole purpose coming in the world, men and brethren, was to destroy the works of the devil, men and brethren. You see, Satan has complete control over the flesh in these last days. But Jesus Christ came, men and brethren, to destroy those works of the devil. Jesus Christ came to give us power in these last days that we no longer have to be subject to sin and death any longer, men and brethren. You no longer have to be subject to those pains and sufferings that Adam brought upon man, men and brethren. We're saying if you can truly repent and serve God in these last days, once you breathe that last breath, men and brethren, we're telling you, you will see God's face in peace. This is the one and only way that you can see God's face in peace, men and brethren. But we're telling you today, if you continue to be stiff-necked, if you continue to rebel against the commandments of God, men and brethren, we're telling you, you are going to awake to an angry God, men and brethren, once you breathe that last breath. We're telling you, men and brethren, humble yourselves today and come and have fellowship with the true members of God's body where you can truly learn about the righteousness of God, men and brethren. Because we're telling you, all of these ministers that's coming before you today, by God's grace, we are all living lives free from all sins, men and brothers. We are not subject to lusting with our eyes, men and brothers. We are not subject to smoking cigarettes every three to five minutes. We are not subject to fornication and adultery. We are subject to God's commandments, men and brothers. We're satisfied with our one wife, men and brothers. We are able to control our flesh in these last days 
by the grace of God. It's only by God's grace. We're telling you the wages of sin is death. Sin has brought death on the whole world, men and women. But we're telling you the gift of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, He came bringing everlasting life, men and women. He came bringing grace that we can have a chance at life and that we can have that life more abundantly, men and women. We like to give this over to the man minister at this time. Amen, men and brethren. Once again, we're at Church of the Living God, located at 3015 South 54th Street in Tampa, Florida. Here in your community today, as you've heard the ministers that have preceded us, declaring the unadulterated gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We preach a life free from all sin. We preach the righteousness of the faith of the Son of God and not the hypocrisy of the faith of men. We cast down men's self-righteousness and give glory to God. We preach that a man should love God and love his neighbor even above himself. But men in these last days have subverted the gospel of Christ. They preach their form of righteousness that allows sin, that allows one to defraud, debase, and demoralize man who is created in the image of God. We preach that a man should know how to love his one wife. We preach that a woman should know how to love her one husband. We don't preach women loving women. We don't preach men lying down with men. That's an abomination in the sight of God. We preach a life free from all sin today. A life that only God can grant unto the true believers today. We don't come forth preaching and declaring we're doing the best that we can do. We don't go before so-called priests and ministers having to tell them about our repetitiveness of continuance in sin. We preach abstaining from sin all the works and lusts of the flesh by God's true grace. Men in these last days preach you can be a sinner and you can receive grace from God to continue in your sin. But God came and manifest a new and living way that God will give grace on the he that believeth in that righteous testimony, that righteous example that the Lord wrought while he was in the earth. We preach following a godly example today, putting all sin under your feet. But the word of God says in Isaiah, who have believed, I report, who have believed that God died for a purpose, to liberate us from the bondage of sin and death. But men in these last days, where God said they love sin more than they love God, for they drink it down like water. Children, rebellious to their parents. Husbands, not wanting to provide for their own household. These things ought not to be of anyone that's professing to know Christ or rather be known of Christ. Men and brethren, this gospel brought by Christ himself as a standard of what the faith of one that believeth upon Christ should be manifesting daily in one's body. Love, joy, peace through the Holy Ghost. This is the witness that one must have today. Not the witness of a man born as a similitude of Adam. Having a confession. We're going to sin. But we're telling you today, the only confession God received today is according to his 
righteousness. For the word of God says, if Christ be in you, you should know your body should be dead to sin. Sin is no longer supposed to have dominion over you if you truly be begotten of God's spirit. For the word of God tells us, for this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might take away our sins. And in him is no sin. It also says, if we continue in sin, we deny him. And this is what so many are doing tonight, today. They're seeing with their mouths how much they love God. But the works that are daily being wrought in their members are a witness against them that they truly don't know God. They haven't known or been born of His Spirit. So many today, they love to seek after their life in this world. They want to be comfortable in this world. The Lord said, I'm praying not for the world. But I'm praying for those that are mine. That you would keep them while they're in this world from the evil. We declare to you today, men and brethren, God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. If you are in sin, be not deceived. You have no fellowship with God. God neither knows you, nor does he receive your prayers. For the word of God says, God says, I hear not the prayers of a sinner. Therefore, we want me today to repent and turn away from your sins and your unrighteousness and turn to Christ. Come and learn of this new and living way whereby you might find peace with God. That you might be able to work the work of God in your body by God's true grace, by God's spirit. Word of God says there's one Lord. There's only one faith. There's only one baptism. We say today, men and brethren, have you come unto the knowledge of the faith of the Son of God? Everybody proclaiming they understand that Jesus is God. But do you understand what that means for your mortal flesh? Just as Christ live a life free from sin. If you've been begotten of God's spirit, therefore you testify. You become bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. Have you come on to the acknowledgement of this truth today? That God wants you to be even as him today. Living godly in your mortal flesh. For the word of God says, not by might, not by power. We're not professing any strength or wisdom of our abilities of our flesh. But we lifted up our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that has given us of his grace, of his spirit, his power to walk even as he walked today. Whereby we tell me today, God came to grant liberty unto the captives. It says to free them who through all their lifetimes were subject to bondage. Why? Because they feared death. This death that we're speaking about is not a carnal graveyard death. But it's an acknowledgement of dying to the will of your flesh to be risen alive with Christ Jesus. Walking by the faith of the Son of God today, yielding your members as servants of righteousness under God. But who have believed this report? That it is possible to live a life free from all sin today. Come and have fellowship with the body of Christ. Amen. We're Church of the Living God.
And we're here today to preach the unadulterated word of God to you. We'd like to thank God for the word that went forth. And we're just here to continually labor to build on that preaching. As our previous ministers were saying, they were all laboring to stress that same point. They were trying to show the difference between, between true religion and that which is false. The scripture talks about how in these last days that many have gone out and established their own religion, their own forms of righteousness and not that which be of God. We heard the previous ministers laboring to show the difference between a true Christian and those that are just calling themselves Christian. A true Christian, men and brethren, is supposed to be Christ-like. And if you read the book of the Bible, it shows you the life that Christ labored to, as it were, show us why he was on this world. One scripture brings about how in Christ there was found no sin nor God in his mouth. Well, we have many people in this world today calling themselves by the name of Christ. But when you look at their works, their works testify something else. We're saying, men and brother, if you're calling yourself by the name of Christ, you're supposed to depart from iniquity. If Christ is in you, you won't have to continue in sin any longer, men and brother. You no longer have to heed the call of sin. You don't have to be in bondage to the lust of your flesh, to the drugs, to the cigarettes, the smoking and the drinking. You no longer have to be in bondage to fornication, men and brethren, having all these sexual relations outside of marriage. You no longer have to be in bondage to adultery. You can't be satisfied with your spouse for always looking and covering after something else that belongs to somebody else. We're saying today, you don't longer have, as it were, to curse with your mouth and let all of that vile speech come out of your mouth and say with that same mouth that you believe in God. We're saying, men and brethren, that if you're calling yourself by the name of Christ, those same works that Christ, as it were, was laboring to walk in, you have to walk in that same example. And we're not talking about, men and brethren, you walking around fulfilling miracles like some like to believe when they say that you are God. But the real example, the point that Christ wants to show, that real miracle, is when you can turn away from your sin. A lot of people, they want to, as it were, want to think about walking on water or holding their hands up or stopping the sun or whatever they would like to imagine in their thoughts. But they always overlook that which is important. If you ask a lot of people in these last days, they all have that same testimony that they believe in God, but they're still in sin. We're saying you don't truly understand what the grace and power of God is for. The grace and power of God isn't a blank check for you to continue in sin, but it's something much more powerful, more precious than that, men and brethren. That grace of God is power given to you to come out of sin and to keep you from sin. I hear the book of 1 John chapter 3. It speaks about that whosoever is truly born of God, they can't sin because the Spirit of God is in them. That seed of God is in them. Well, we hear a lot of people say the Spirit of God is in me. One scripture talks about 
This scripture says that you call yourself by the name of Christ, but you still sin in your body. Is Christ the one administering that sin? It said, God forbid. That's blasphemy, men and brethren. We're saying, men and brethren, you got to truly understand the will of God for your life today. Even from the beginning, we can all the way, go all the way back to the beginning when God created Adam. He created Adam without sin. But because of Adam's disobedience and hearkening unto his wife and partook of that forbidden fruit, this is what brought about that sin. And all through the Old Testament, you can read about how sin and Satan were running rampant in the world, beating down all flesh, men and brethren. But we're saying in these last days, Christ, as it were, is come and he is manifested in flesh and blood, men and brethren. One scripture, it says that believe not every spirit, but try them. Because every spirit that's born of God, they're going to confess Christ in him crucified. Amen. And what does that mean, men and brethren? We're not here just to speak great swell of words or try to sound nice. But we're here for your salvation, men and brethren. We're here, as it were, to try to save men's souls today. When you say Christ in him crucified, that's supposed to be Christ in you. Men and brethren, you dying to your flesh, dying to the lust of your flesh. Men and brethren, when Satan comes to try you, to tempt you, to sin, the Spirit of God is going to be in you. You don't have to listen to Satan anymore. You no longer have to be Paul, as Paul, men and brethren, in the book of Romans, chapter 7, where he was testifying about how he had a desire to do good. But every time he tried to do that good, sin was always present with him. If you read further on to the latter book of the uh, end of the book, men and brethren, he, Paul says that he thanked Christ, our Lord. He saved him from that wretched state of sin, men and brethren. And this is the faith that we preach today. We preach the righteousness of God, not our own righteousness, men and brethren. On your own, you can't live a life free of sin. It's not by your own willpower, but it's by you humbling yourself to God, men and brethren, and acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord. This is a great problem in the world today. One scripture talks about how a perilous and um, Second Timothy chapter 3 it talks about perilous times is going to come when men are going to be lovers of their own selves proud, heady and covetous men and brethren this is the problem with this world today, men they believe that gain is godliness wondering as it were running after this world, running after the education of this world running after how much money they can make on their job, wondering how much women or men they can take as it were into their room, their bedroom. We're talking about righteousness in these last days, men and brethren. You don't have to sin no more. One scripture talks about in Romans chapter 10. The scripture says that uh, my prayer and desire for Israel is that they might be saved. For though they have a zeal for God, it's not according to righteousness. And it says why? Because they go about to establish their own righteousness and not the righteousness of God. As we were saying to today, men and brother, as before, we have so many different forms of religion. Men, as it were, they like to create their own path to God. But we hear the scripture saying, the Lord saying, I am the way. Jesus said, I am the only way. And no man can come unto God but by me. And we're saying, how do you come to God? You can't come to God, men and brethren, if you're still in sin. 
There's no such thing, men and brethren, as a sinner saved by grace. Men and brethren, we're here today not as it were to try to beat you down or just to condemn you, but we're here to show you, as it were, the error of your ways and to show you how to come out, Lord Jesus Christ, uh, come to Jesus Christ, men and brethren, and find salvation today true salvation this is a faith the true faith of jesus christ where you no longer have to sin there's no such thing as i'm of god i believe and then every now and then i backslide into sin no men and brother the grace of god the power of god keeps you from sin men and brother we're saying men and brother as the word of god go forth hard and not your heart in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We are the Church of the Living God here in your neighborhood today. And as a previous minister was just laboring to show you our purpose of being out here, we're searching for God's lost sheep. We're looking for those that truly want to be delivered from the bondage of sin that the world is abiding in today. And as a brethren being laboring to preach to you today, it is possible for you to live a life free from all sin Amen. God have given that power unto his son Amen. and we hear the scriptures coming out of st. John chapter 1 verse 12 showing who is the son of God them that can truly have faith in God to him to them give he power to become sons of God and as you was hearing even we have pretty sure the minister has been laboring to truly show you a church that is truly of God is going to be laboring to preach living a life free from all sins Amen. just like the brethren been laboring and stressing that out today if you calling yourself of god you got to know god is holy 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 the scriptures declare yeah. and if you calling yourself of god you have to be holy also Amen. the lord he have not called us we hear it coming out of first thessalonians chapter 4 unto uncleanness but unto holiness just like the brethren been laboring to show you, we're not out here to beat anybody with the word of God, but we just preaching God's words. As we said, we, we're sent here by God looking for his lost sheep and truly to show you through the scriptures and warn you. One that's still abiding in sin, you're not truly of God. You don't know God. The scriptures declares that in 1 John chapter 1 and 2. You can say with your mouth all you want that you, I know God. But as long as you're still abiding in that sin, your works are confessing otherwise. We also hear in the first John chapter three, verse nine, how those that's abiding in sin, the scripture says that they're the servants of the devil. And it's not just something we're making up. We might be hearing the words that we're preaching and we just might be thinking, oh, they're just making these things up. But we, like, we do like to look at that scripture, first John chapter three. It's written in the King James Version of the Bible. And truly understand, like we said again, our purpose out here, we searching for God's lost sheep. We here to declare and be a witness before you today that it is possible for you to live a life free from all sin. We're not preaching like those false prophets out there preaching, come as you are, or do the best as you can, or we all sinners saved by grace. We're saying all those doctrines that's being preached of the world, if they're still abiding in sin, that's false doctrine. And they don't truly know God. The scriptures declare that. 1 John chapter 3. We'd like to start at verse 2. Verse uh, 4. It says, Whosoever committeth sin also transgresseth the law. But sin is the transgression, transgression of the law. And you know that he was manifest to take away our sins. In him is no sin. Everybody had that testimony. For oh, the Lord, he's great. Jesus Christ, he's great. He came and he died for my sins. A lot of people like love to say that. Let that roll off their tongue. But do you truly know what that means for your life? Man. If he died for your sin, why you are yet in your sins? Man. Man. There's grace and power to the true believer in these last days to overcome sin. It's like you heard of the previous minister preaching on to you today. And one can only find that grace and power when they truly have in fellowship with a church that's truly preaching, living that life in sin. Not just
just preaching it, but also walking by the grace of God on this earth. It speaks about that in Titus chapter 2. We're going to look at that after this scripture. It's teaching and saying that that grace of God should be teaching you how to live godly, righteously in this present world. Not after you die. Don't listen to those false prophets out there in the world. You want to say you become perfect after you die. That's when the, no, no, it, it, it's not like that. The scripture says in this present world, the Lord, he can give you grace, power to overcome all sins. I'd like to continue on here, verse, verse, verse five, verse six. I said, whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. What is the scripture saying? If you truly abiding in God in these last days, the scripture says you should not be sinning in your body. And that casts down so many false churches out there in the world. Everybody want to say, I have a testimony. I have something I want to say about God. Are you still in your sin? You don't have nothing to say about God. The Lord, he don't know one that's abiding in sin. Continue on here, say, whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth have not seen him, neither known him. And that's why we're saying you can preach all you want to your to you blue in the face that I know God. But if you still abiding in sin, the scripture says you don't know God. Amen. And God don't know you. Amen. Verse 7 it says, Little children, let no man deceive you. And this is again, this is our purpose in your midst today. So you won't be deceived by false religion. You won't be deceived by the devil that's ruling this world. We labor to truly show you God's true plan of salvation for your life. Know that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Verse 7, little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. And this is what we're declaring in your midst today. The ministers that are standing before you today, we're not just preaching living a life free from all sin, but we are doing it by the grace of God. And to live a life free from sin, even the previous minister was touching on that point also. It's not something you can do of yourself. The Lord, he got to give one grace to live that life free from sin. And that's what we declare known to you today. We're saying by God's grace, we can live that life free from sin. We do have that power to love our neighbor as God has loved us. We do have that power to turn our eyes away from boredom. We do have that power to put down the cigarettes, to put down the liquor bottle, to put down the drugs. We have that power, not of ourselves, but as we have in faith in God, as we have in fellowship with a church that's truly preaching Jesus Christ is coming to flesh. That's how we are obtaining that power to live a life free from all sin. Continue on here, verse eight. He that committed sin is of the devil. We're not making this up. King James Version of the Bible, 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest, manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. That's the whole purpose of our, that our Lord Jesus Christ came on earth to destroy the work of the devil, that lie of the devil. That he, want, that he want to preach to you today, saying, you can't do nothing. You still gonna abide in sin to the day you born until the day you die. You always gonna be abiding in sin. That's the lie of the devil. We say the Lord, he came and destroyed that work, destroyed that lie. And he's given power to those that truly believe in him in his last days. Continue on here. Verse nine, whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. Very powerful scripture cast down so many false religions out there in the world. These are the scriptures that those false prophets out there in the world, they don't want to read to their congregation because they know that their works, they, they're not abiding in that, when that word that's being spoken, that word condemned them. He that, he that is of God does not commit sin. That's casting down so many false prophets out there in the world today. I want to preach that lie, come as you are, do the best as you can, we all come short of the glory. No, that's a lie. That's only a veil, that's that uh, condemnation, that bondage, is only on those that's not truly having faith in God. It speaks about that in Hebrews chapter 3. The Lord said, of whom, of whom that's not going to enter into his rest? It's because of unbelief. 
They're not willing to have faith in God that he can deliver one from all works of the flesh. So when you're under that bondage to that sin, no, it's, it's because you're not having faith in God. And we saying you're very fortunate. These ministers here laboring for your soul salvation, preaching unto you these words of life. And truly, they are words of life. If one can truly humble yourselves through the words that we preach to you today, one of the ministers also was bringing out, there's peace in living a life free from sin. It's not always suffering. It's not always uh, the world want to preach or y'all just don't do nothing. We can't do nothing. I want to have fun. No, you got to understand the wages of sin is death. The scripture says, if, uh, you're going to, it's a scripture in Hebrews. How all men is, uh, yes, amen. Thank you, Jesus. It's appointed all men wants to die after that, the judgment. So you got to labor. We hear and uh, also in Psalms chapter 90, uh, David was speaking, Lord, teach me to number my days. You got to know how to number your days on this earth today. You're not going to live forever. And if you die in that sin, the scripture says you're going to wake up in hell in the lake of fire. Scripture goes on here. It says in this, the children of God are manifest. This is what we got. We want to make manifest in your eyes today, even as the ministers always also already been making manifest in your eyes. The difference between that clean and the unclean. It says, and this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil, whosoever doth not righteousness is not of God. It just constantly just bringing out that point that the flesh in the world want to be so easy to forget. A Christian do not sin. A Christian love their neighbor as God has loved them. A Christian is faithful to their spouse. A Christian raise up their children in the fear of God so they won't sin against God. Continue on here. And this the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. Whosoever doth not righteousness is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. A lot of you might be hearing these words today. Might be saying, don't y'all have a church to go to? Why y'all preaching to us? We here to truly show you through the uh, through the Bible, by the grace of God, the ministers also been laboring to truly show you that your bodies are not your own. The world they wanna they are born into this people are born into this life. Their parents not knowing any better. They wanna teach them do the best that you can. Go for the gusto and just run after your life and fulfill your lusts. But we saying you was created for a purpose, and it's not to walk in sin to glorify the devil in your body. But you're supposed to be glorifying God, which is your creator, in your body in these last days. We'd like to look at here in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. It speaks about that also. He's saying, don't be deceived by false religion. Don't be deceived by these false prophets. They're not laboring for your soul salvation. They want your money. Always passing out those offering plates throughout the service two, three times in one service. They're just looking for your money. But we out here, we're not asking for nobody for no money. We have, we also have received this word freely, and freely we give it out unto the world. So whosoever have faith can receive these words of life. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. The scripture says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. The Lord saying, your temple, your body, is his. You're supposed to be glorifying your Lord and your body in these last days. A lot of people, they're born into this world. They don't truly know what's their purpose. So they want to run after all these things of this world. I'm going to go here and, and do this and do that, trying to find out my purpose. And we, we, by the grace of God, the ministers also here, we let you know what is your purpose on this earth today, we say we, you're supposed to be glorifying God in your body. Just like the scripture says here, it says, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seem to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. That wisdom of this world that want to say, come and do the best that you can. The Lord, he came. He walked, walked that perfect example on the earth, showing you how you should love 
God, with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And after that, he died, giving power to whosoever had faith in him, in that work that he did. But the world, they want to look at that and think it's, it's nothing. They want to worry about finding their life in this world more than finding their life in God. But we hear the scripture speaks about that also in Matthew. That him that, that's looking and running after this world, trying to find their life in this world, they're going to lose it. But them that's laboring to truly lose that lifestyle of sin, they're going to find their life in Christ. Continue on here, it says, For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He hath, take, he hath taken the wise and their own craftiness. I'd like to look at here also. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. He's saying, don't be deceived. We labor for your soul salvation today. Here, the words that we're preaching, they're, they're life if one can truly receive them. It says here, verse 1 of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. It says, For, furthermore, then we beseech you and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, and as you have received of us how you ought to walk and to please God, so you would abound more and more. And this is what our purpose here for you today, that you might abound, not in this world, all these false prophets out there in the world, they prosperity preachers, they want to teach you how to be prosperous and how to prosper in this world. We're not preaching how to be prosperous in this world. We, treat, we labor and by the grace of God and showing you how to be prosperous in God and godliness in these last days. And we say that don't come by you just saying it's just me and God and my personal Savior. It's just me and no, the Lord, he have a body on the earth here today. And that body is preaching, living a life free from all sin. And one has to have a fellowship with that body in order to receive of the Lord's grace to do the will of God. Continue on here and say, for ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication. And that's something that the world, they drink down that like water. Fornication, that's nothing to them. But the Lord is saying, a Christian, they can't, they can't commit fornication. It's the same here, we'd like to read it again. It says that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel and sanctification and an honor. Verse 3, it says, For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication. A Christian do not commit sin. A Christian that is married do not commit adultery. A Christian is not a homosexual or a lesbian. The Lord, he can deliver you from all works of the flesh in these last days. But you got to have faith in God. You got to have fellowship with a church that's truly preaching Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Okay. Verse 5, it said, Not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. But God has not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. Therefore he that despises, despises not men, but God, who so... Who, are, who have also given us of his Holy Spirit. Amen. And even as we, uh, the scripture just said, these words that we're preaching to you today, it's not of the flesh. We're saying we're sent by God. If you're despising the words that you we you hearing today through the ministers, you, get, you gotta know you're despising God. Preach. These Amen. words of holiness, judge these words within yourself. What man you know preaching, living life free from sin in these last days? Apparently, if you see somebody doing that, you got to truly know they truly love God. They're not trying to sugarcoat the, uh, the Word of God and trying to uh, change the Word of God. We also heard one of the ministers talk, uh, touching on their words for you today. We don't change the Word of God. We labor to preach it to you as the Lord give it to us, as we was taught by a true apostle in these last days. I'd like to continue here. Titus chapter 2. You're saying, don't be deceived. By false religion, false doctrine out there in the world. But one needs to repent in these last days. Preach. Repent of that sin and truly be born again. Mm -hmm. Titus chapter 2. Starting at verse 11. Okay. Scripture says, <laughs> For the grace of God that bringeth salvation have appeared to all men, teaching us that deny ungodliness and the worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. The Lord saying that grace is available to everyone today. 
to live holy, soberly, righteously in this present world. But you gotta have faith in God. You can't do it of yourself. Verse 13, looking for the blessed hope and the, and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity. That's the whole purpose of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ coming on the earth. We hear the scripture says here, to redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. We also like to look in uh, Colossians chapter 3. So many of you want to say you love God, just like we just read. And First John just bring it out. If you abide in sin, you don't know God. Also in Colossians chapter 3, it speaks about that also. If you truly been risen with Christ, I'd like to look at here in Colossians chapter 3, verse, uh, verse 1. The scripture says, if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. And we say fornication is not of above. Adultery is not of above. Defiling your body with cigarettes and drugs and liquor is not from above. But we hear the scripture says here, but if then, if you then be risen with Christ, seek those, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections, uh, set your affections on things above, not on things on earth. For you are dead and your life is hid with Christ and God. When Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. It says here, mortify therefore the, your members which are upon the earth. Fornication. You calling yourself a God, the Lord said you gotta mortify that lust in your flesh, fornication. Mortify that uncleanness, ordinate affection, evil, concupiscence, covetousness, which is idolatry. The Lord said, if you call yourself of God, you got to be crucified through those works of the flesh. Verse 6, it says, for which things say the wrath of God cometh upon the children of disobedience. You still abide in those works of the flesh? You got to know the wrath of God is on you. One of the missions was laboring to bring out all these sexual transmitted diseases. Why do you think those things are? Because the Lord, he's against fornication. The Lord, he's against adultery. The Lord, he's against homosexuality, he's against lesbian, lesbianism. Why do you think all these sexual transmitted diseases out there in the world? Because the Lord, he's against those evil works. Continue on here. We got one more scripture we'd like to go to. I'm saying don't be deceived by these false prophets out there in the world. They don't truly know God's plan for your life. But we here, sent by God, by the grace of God, we know God's plans for your life today. And we say to the Lord, he's not, uh, he's not a God that loves sin. Lord, he's against sin. The scripture said, the Lord, he's the same yesterday, today, forever. Lord, he'll always be against sin. But we'd like to look at here in our last scripture coming out of Hebrews chapter 3. You saying, don't harden your heart to the words that's being spoken today, but if one can receive of these words and humble yourself to the words that's being spoken today, one can truly receive of God's grace to become a son of God. Verse 8 of, of Hebrews chapter 3. So verse 7 says, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said, today if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in a provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your father proved, when your father tempted me and proved me and saw my works forty years, and wherefore was I grieved with that generation, said the and said, they do always err in their hearts, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath that they should not enter unto my rest. The Lord, he's not giving one of his kingdom if one still abiding in sin. The, Lord, the scripture says here, take heed, at least there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it's called today, at least any of you should be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Just like so many of you are today. And we try to labor by the grace of God to break those chains off you that the devil have on you. And we declare it unto you. And we also not just declare, but we living that life free from sin. And we declaring it is possible for you to live that life free of sin also. <laughs> Oh. 
For, for we are made particles of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast until the end. Right. Amen. I'd like to call forth the minister. Amen. Where are you they put today? To preach to you the true word of God. That was going to preach to us by true men of God. Brother, take a true man of God for you to go and hear this word of God. For the scripture says in Matthew chapter 7, I'll beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep clothing, but inwardly they are wavering wolves. Rather than the false prophets are out there preaching for your money, rather than a true man of God, we're going to preach to save your soul. We're going to preach about living life free of sin. And we now have grace to live life free of sin when Christ came and died in these last days at this time. And the scripture in Matthew chapter 6 talk about how, how shall we continue therein that the grace of God may abound. God forbid. Brother, there is no such thing as a sinner saved by grace. For God came and died where we were supposed to live life free of sin in these last days through His grace. There, there is no free ticket for you to enter sin. You can go and sin all you want, and then when you die, you're going to enter the kingdom of God. Brother, man, and it says in 1 John chapter 5, it talk about how the grace of God it will keep you from sin every day. If you're a Christian, you'll live a life free of sin every day of the week. Every day. Not going to be a Christian only on Sunday. You're supposed to go and labor, for, labor to be a Christian 100% of the time. And after then, in Matthew, another scripture, in Ecclesiastes, talk about how we put how God's going to judge you for what you do in your body. How it says, we're going to turn that this time. It says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. It says, For God shall bring every work into judgment and every secret thing, whether it be good or evil. Right, if, you're gonna lay, if you're working evil in your body in the last days, you're going to go straight to hell to burn for eternity with, with the devil and his angels. Right, it's time to hear it from my mister. Amen. We're in your neighborhood today to preach the unadulterated word of God, spoken by a true man of God. We're not here out here for your money, but we're here to deliver your soul from hell and lake of fire, everlasting. We're here. One scripture in Romans chapter six, verse twenty-three say, "The wages of sin is death. As long as you abide in that sin, you bring your death upon yourself. You're shortening your days." One scripture in Psalms say, the, the Lord is angry with the sinner every day. Every time you sin, the Lord is getting angrier with you. Judgment is going to come on the earth one day. The Lord is going to come down to judge the earth one day. And you don't want to be one of those that he will punish with hell everlasting. You want to see the Lord's face in peace. He's going to come down one day. He's going to judge the earth of all what you have done. If y'all in sin, it's a, you're going to reap what you sow. If you sin it, you're going to reap death and hell. If you come, fellowship with us, you can truly fellowship with the church of God. Humble yourselves. You can live a life free from sin and see the Lord's face of peace when you come. Because the Lord is going to come one of these days. It's a, you don't know the hour, but he's going to come as a thief in the night. So you, as one of the ministers is saying, you have to live every day as it is your last. Because you never know when you're going to die. You can die today. And if you're in sin, you're going to hell. If you, if you die today in this fellowship, truly living a life free from sin, you could, will give you everlasting life. Once We'll go to scripture in Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Said, let, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey in it in the lust thereof. Neither yield as your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. You should come fellowship with us. Yield your body. The Lord didn't create your body for sin. 
man. Lord created it to walk in his image, that image of righteousness. No sin. The Lord don't want you to defile your temple. You should come, fellowship with us, live that sin-free life. The Lord can uh, give you eternal life after that. Say, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace. God forbid. Know ye not to whom you yield yourselves service to obey. His service ye are to whom you obey. To who, to who you yield yourselves to. If you sin, this one of the scriptures says, when you sin, you, you are a servant of sin. You are the devil. You are a son of the devil. But when you yield your members unto a righteousness to work this righteousness and live a sin-free life. And some churches, they like to say that baptism just get being dumped down in water. But you can't go down a dry devil and come up a wet devil. You got to truly turn away from your sin. You got to truly come out of that sin and truly live that life free from sin. It's, you can truly do that today if you fellowship with us. Church of the living God. There is only one there's only one church that you're gonna find in the Bible, and it's that church of the living God. The pillar and ground of the truth. There's only one church that can save you from your sins. That's church of the living God today. We can truly, if you come, humble yourself and be baptized with us. You can truly have eternal life today. And we will save your soul from hell. We're not out here for your money. We're here to preach unto you the unadulterated word of God. Turn it to another speaker at this time. Praise the blood of Jesus Christ. We are Church of the Living God. We're located at 3015 North South 54th Street here in Tampa, Florida. We're here to preach to you the unadulterated word of God. And as you heard the ministers talking and discussing the word of God, we're very thankful to have these young ministers out here laboring for your salvation. This is truly a blessing to find faithful ministers of Jesus Christ and young men that are not so busy after the things of the world. They're not so busy about trying to glorify their flesh in music and in dance. They're not so busy about glorifying their flesh with drugs and alcohol and trying to see who's the biggest fornicator or lover boy. But these are faithful young men that are laboring in the word of God and showing you in these last days the example of righteousness, the example of truth, the example of godliness in your life. And this is what all of you should want. You should want young men, young women that are faithful to the gospel, that are faithful to themselves, that are faithful to the truth that's being preached in these last days. We thank God for His grace through this gospel that He's given us to live a life free from all sin. And that's right, what we're saying today is through this gospel, the Lord gives you power. The scripture says, as many as believed on His name, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. This is what we're saying today through this gospel. We have received power to become the sons of God, power to live holy in our flesh. The minister was saying earlier, it's very important for you to hear this truth and repent of your sins because the Bible says that the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back again and he shall judge every man according to the works that he's done in his body, whether they be good or whether they be evil. That's why many of you are afraid of death because you don't know what's coming after death. And we're saying, the scripture says, it is appointed unto men once to die and after this comes the judgment. 
That's what you're afraid of. That's why mankind is afraid to die. They're afraid of the judgment for the things that they've done in their bodies. Deep down inside of each and every one of you, you know whether you've done good and you know whether you've done evil. You don't need me to stand here and tell you that fornication is wrong. You don't need me to stand here and tell you that murder and adultery and homosexuality is wrong. You don't need me here to tell you that. You know that that is true. But because you spent your lifetime living in these abominable sins, you fear God's judgment. You fear death. You don't want to die because when you die, you're going to be judged by an angry God for the things that you've done in your body. That's why men are afraid to die. Because they know they've done wrong in their lifetime. It's like when you get pulled over by the police. As soon as you see those lights in your mirror, you get afraid. Why? Because you think you've done wrong. And I'm saying you're going to stand before an angry God on the day of judgment and be judged for all of the things you've done in your body. That masturbation, that homosexuality, that fornication, that adultery, those evil thoughts of murder against your neighbor, all of those things God is going to judge you for and cast you in a lake of fire that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. A lot of people might chuckle and laugh and say, Preacher, you're out of your mind. You're talking about fables and fantasies. But I'm telling you, my friends, it is appointed on the men once to die. And after this comes the judgment. You know in yourselves what we're saying is true. If it was not true, you wouldn't be paying attention right now. If you didn't believe that God is going to judge you for your sins, you would be laughing me to scorn right now. But because you're listening to what I'm saying, you know that these words are true. You know that one day you're going to have to pay for your sins. One day you're going to have to pay the price for all of that unbelief. For all of that blasphemy and fornication, for all of that evil you've done in your bodies. I'm telling you, my friend, God never intended you to live in sin. God never attend intended for you to be a homosexual. God never intended mankind to be steeped in adultery, lesbianism, and sexual perversion. God never attended you to be a fornicator or a liar. But because you love sin and you drink it down like water, you love to party and dance to all of that music. You love to be proud and think you somebody. But I'm telling you today, my friends, you're nothing in the sight of God. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Man, at his best state, is altogether vanity. Man in his pride with all of his money and all of his cars and riches and whores is nothing but vanity. He is nothing but a worm in the sight of God. And on the day of judgment, God is going to call all things into perspective. Men today, they think they're God unto themselves. But I'm telling you, my friend, God is the Almighty God. And He's going to judge you for your pride. Thank you, Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, my friend, it was never intended for you to be in sin. But because of Adam, the scripture says we all fell in sin. We were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. This is why Jesus was born of a virgin. This is why God himself stepped down from his heavenly throne and was born of in the flesh. God himself became a man and took upon himself the sins of all mankind. God himself, the Yahweh, the Jehovah, the El Shaddai of the Old Testament, 
the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He became flesh and blood as a man, and his name is Jesus Christ. And there is no other name under heaven whereby which we must be saved except the name of Jesus Christ. Neither is there salvation in any other. We're telling to you today that Jehovah can't save you. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Yahweh can't save you. Thank you, Jesus Christ. The God of the Muslims can't save you. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Mohammed, in the in the in their, the the Bible in their book of the Muslims, that Mohammed can't save you because there's no other name under heaven given among men except the name of Jesus Christ. And the Bible tells me that on this day of judgment that we speak of, Jesus is going to judge you. And all men shall confess with their mouth. All men shall fall to their knees and confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. There's a lot of you today that won't acknowledge and won't humble yourselves and confess God. But we sing today on the day of judgment. You're going to turn from your sins on the day of judgment. You're going to confess to an angry God. But it's going to be too late, my friends. This is why we're here today to tell you to turn from your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. We're telling you today it is possible to please God and live holy in the midst of an evil and adulterous generation. We're telling you today it is possible just like you see these young men out here instead of gambling and walking in the flesh they're out here preaching the gospel. It's possible to live godly in the midst of an evil and adulterous generation. There's murder in the streets. There's drug in the streets. There's adultery and whoredom in the streets. But it is possible to live holy and live unto God. It is possible to please God in all things through this gospel that we're preaching. It is possible to thank you, Jesus Christ, to please God. And this is what we're saying, my friends. This is the will of God. Even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fleshly lusts and live godly in this present world. Thank you, Jesus Christ. A new grace has been manifested in these last days. And this grace, it teaches us to deny ungodliness. This grace that we receive teaches us to live holy and godly in this present world. Thank you, Jesus Christ. It is possible by the power of God to live holy. A lot of people, they think that God can make them rich overnight. They think if they pray hard enough that God will give them a lot of money. They think if they pray hard enough, God will give them a girlfriend or a boyfriend. They think that if they get sick and they pray hard enough, God will heal them of their diseases. But they don't believe that God will give you power to live free from sin. They don't believe in the will of God. This is God's will, and that's what you need to believe in, that God can cause you to live holy and without sin in the midst of an evil and adulterous generation. I know your excuse. You're saying we're all sinners. That's why you must be born again, because you were a sinner before you came to Christ. But when you come to Christ through this gospel, you become a new creature. Behold all things are new. Thank you, Jesus Christ. And Jesus gives you power to become the Son of God. You become born again of God's Spirit. Thank you, Jesus Christ. The Spirit to live holy and godly in the midst of an evil generation. It's called the Holy Spirit. A lot of you don't know about the Holy Spirit. It causes you to live holy. Not like these false churches they talk about the Holy Spirit but they're the biggest hypocrites and the biggest sinners you ever seen the Baptists are the biggest hypocrites and the biggest sinners you 
you ever seen. The Catholics, they're the biggest hypocrites and the biggest sinners you ever seen. The Catholics, they got pedophiles for their priests. Thank you, Jesus Christ. We're telling you, my friend, the true Holy Spirit, it causes you to live free from sin. The true Holy Spirit, it causes you to love your neighbor as you love yourself. The true Holy Spirit, it causes you to to find those things that please God. The true Holy Spirit, it seals you and saves you until the day of redemption. We're telling you, my friends, come and learn of the true Holy Ghost. Come and learn of the true Word of God. Don't be deceived by these false prophets that tell you that sin is all right. These false prophets, they tell you that it's all right to sin and be in an enemy to God. But we're telling you, if you're an enemy to God, thank you, Jesus Christ, God is going to cast you in the lake of fire that burns with brimstone, which is the second death. Turn from your sins today and believe this gospel that we preaching come and drink of the waters of life thank you Jesus Christ stop drinking that polluted water in the Baptist church stop drinking that polluted water in the Catholic church and come and drink freely of the waters of the fountain of life come and drink of the word of God and be cleansed by the water washing of God's word thank you Jesus Christ how long will you remain in your sins how long will you remain in rebellion to God how long will you remain in your pride turn my friend and fall on the rock and be broken humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God thank you Jesus Christ before God cause darkness to fall upon you before God turn out your light thank you Jesus Christ before God grab your heart and make it stop thank you Jesus Christ humble yourselves and turn from your sins and be baptized be a son of God turn from darkness into the marvelous light and liberty of a child of God come out of sin come out of fornication come out of hatred and envy and be the child of God turn from your sins today and be baptized I'm telling you my friends come and have fellowship with us because our fellowship is with God the Father a lot of people say they know God but they know the devil they know sin and they don't know God they say they know God but you can tell them by their fruit when you look on their tree on their tree you look at what kind of fruit they have the Bible tells me you're gonna know a tree by the fruit it carries if some Somebody saying they're God and they're nothing but a big sinner then you know they're a liar and don't know God if you see somebody who says they know God but you look on the tree and you see cursing in their mouth and they light up a cigarette they're nothing but a big liar and they don't know God we're telling you my friends we know God and if you want to have fellowship with God then come and have fellowship with us because our fellowship is with God the Father and with His Son Jesus Christ. Turn from your sins today and come out of darkness. Come away from being a child of the devil and become a child of God. Be baptized in the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus shed His blood on the cross almost 2,000 years ago. But we're telling you today that blood is here today right now in the Word of God to purge your conscience uh, from dead works. Uh, that blood is here today um, in the mouth of the believer to cleanse you uh, from the spirit of a whore. That blood is here today to cleanse you uh, from the spirit of a homosexual. That blood is here
declare today to cleanse you from the spirit of a murderer. Come and have fellowship with us because our fellowship is with God. Come and have fellowship with us and the blood of Jesus Christ shall cleanse you from all sin. The blood of Jesus Christ will destroy the devil in your life. The blood of Jesus Christ will destroy sin in your life. The blood of Jesus will perfect you and lift you up in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. The blood that was shed on Calvary's cross is God's atonement for sin. And if you want that atonement in your life, come and have fellowship with us. We are church of the living God. We're located at 3015 South 54th Street here in Tampa. And if you want to have fellowship, if you want to know how to have your sins taken away, thank you, Jesus Christ. Come and have fellowship with the true church of God. In Jesus' name we pray. This blessing and these words that you heard today, they're unto you and is unto many as the Lord our God shall call. If you will come and have this fellowship, we know the Lord will bless you and your families throughout life eternal. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, brethren. We're in your neighborhood today to preach unto you the true word of God. From our church, we're church of the living God. As you can see, all the other ministers, we're all saying the same thing. This is not, we're not here to play church, men and brother, but we're here for the saving of your souls. We're going to show you that here in uh, 1 John. This word, it'll give you power, men and brethren, to put away the cigarette. It'll give you power to love your one wife, to love your one husband, put down the liquor bottle. It'll give you power if you just believe and have faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 John chapter 3, verses 8. It says, He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. But brother, there's some out there that believe that you could be a sinner and still be saved by grace. We're saying that's not the case here. Scripture says, Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. As the previous minister was saying, we're not here for any money or vain glory in the flesh, but we're here for the saving of your souls. We're just here trying to preach to you the true word of God at this time, men and brethren. We're going to show you that here in uh, Romans chapter 6. Scripture says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin, that God grace, God grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? You can't commit sin and say, Christ, he, he did it all for us. He died on the cross, and that's it. We can sin all we want. We're saying that's not the case. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death, Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. Once you be baptized, men and brother, you cannot, you can no longer go into sin. Scripture says it's not your body anymore, but it's Christ's body. We'll show you that here in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Verses 15. Scripture says, Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that he which is that he which is joined to a heart is one body, for two saith he shall be one flesh. Friend and brother, we believe in marriage at this time. We don't have any boyfriend or girlfriends in our church. We don't have two wives or two husbands at this time. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. If you believe this doctrine, it'll give you power. It'll give you power to flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committed fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and you are not your own? But brother, for you are bought with a price, and that price is Christ's blood at this time, where he died on the cross for our sins. 
For you are bought with the price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God. You can no longer be in sin, men and brethren. That's what we're out here preaching today. We're not out here for money, as the previous ministers were saying. Those are the words we have for you at this time. Amen. Amen. We are Church of Living God here today in your neighborhood to preach unto you the true and unadulterated word of God. And as all of the other ministers were saying, we are not here for any kind of money. Uh, we're not here to try to please one's flesh, but we're trying to save one's soul. And as other ministers were saying that we're not here, men, we're not here to try to speak those new things because we are saying today that we are not like the false prophet that just try to speak smooth things to try to please one's flesh or try to make some um, some um, money off one. But we are here to truly try to save your soul and we are saying today that if you can truly hear these words of life today it can truly save one's soul in these last days if the lord give one grace to hear, to hear the word of god we say today that many are deceived in these last days to think that they can be saved that they can be saved in sin they think that they think that they can serve that they think that they can serve two masters that they can love that they can love their flesh and that they can know Christ. We are saying today, men, we are saying today, men and brother, that if you are still in sin, that we sing that Christ does not know one. Let's go to let's go to a scripture in Romans. Chapter 6. It says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue with sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us were baptized in Jesus Christ was baptized into his death. We other we heard the other ministers speaking about how one that one truly have to put off all of those old works of sin that one used to be privy to. It says, therefore we are buried with him by baptism to death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we all shall so walk in the newness of life. For we being planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that his that henceforth we shall not serve sin. We cannot no longer be in bondage to to that old man, to that sin any longer. We say Christ, see, when he had died on the cross, he truly gave us that power to truly live that life free from all sin. The Lord, the Lord said, I can truly give one that grace in these last days to truly overcome all, to to, to truly co overcome all sin. But we say today that 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 the flesh it doesn't want to come out of that sin. The Scripture talks about how the flesh it likes to drink down that sin like um like water. But we say today that if you that if you truly want. To, that if you truly want to be saved in these last days, we say today that you must truly come out of your sins. It says, for in that he died, he died unto sin once, and that he lived, he lived unto God. We say today that Christ, he is only going to give us this one chance at salvation. We are saying today that one should not harden their hearts as you are truly hearing these words of God that is being preached. That is being preached today because if, because if one died, because if one die in sin, we say today that one is going to just open up their eyes. That one is going to open up their eyes in hell. We say today that Christ he truly give, get, he, he has truly given us that chance of salvation, and and one shouldn't be gambling with their sal, one shouldn't be gambling with their salvation in these last days. It says, neither you your members as instruments of unrighteousness until sin, but you yourselves on to God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments until of righteousness until God. We say today that one that one truly have to understand why they are that why they are called. We are saying today that your bodies it is it is it is not your own to just full up all of the lust of one's flesh. We are saying today that Christ he has put us on he has put us on this earth to truly glorify and do and do his and do his work. We are saying today that that your body it is not your own. It says, Know ye not that to whom you your servants to obey, he serves you are to whom you obey, whether sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. We are saying today that Christ can say that excuse me. One can say that they know Christ, but we are saying today that if one is still abiding 
it, if the one is still a bike, it's in. We are saying that we are saying that you do, that you do not truly know that you do not truly know Christ, and and, and we say that you are still abiding in sin. We say the only we say the only way that one can truly know Christ is if they truly have been baptized of the um of the um water and also of the Spirit of Christ. It says, being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. I speak after men of men because of the uh, firmness of your flesh. For as you have made your members servants to uncleanness and to uh, iniquity, even so now yield your members to service unto righteousness and unto holiness. For when you were servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. For few have you been on those things whereof you are now ashamed. For then of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become servants of God, you have your fruit unto holiness in the end ever, in the end ever, ever lasting life. We say today that this is the only, the only way that one is going to truly be able to find that ever lasting life is is as the scripture is labored to bear as should be labored to bear out. One truly have to come that straight way, and and, and we saying that the only way to come that straight way in these last days if one is truly is being of uh, is truly is truly uh, being born and truly being born again of God's spirit it says for the wage of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through, G through Jesus Christ our Lord as the end of the verse it says it says for the wage of sin that is truly that is truly that is truly um that is truly um, death, but we say today that if one truly wants to find that eternal life, we say that one truly has to come out of their sins and truly be part and truly be partakers of Jesus Christ. It's uh, Romans chapter eight, verse one. It says, "There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the um, Spirit." We say today that the only that the only way that one is going to truly be have peace and that truly going to have peace and truly gonna have peace in one's in one's um, mind is if one is truly walking in God's spirit. And we say today that God that we all know that Christ He is holy, holy, holy. And if one is saying that they are of Christ, one has to be holy, holy also. And one cannot be abiding in sin. Yeah. Let's go to um, our last scripture coming from Saint Matthews. Verses 7, I mean, St. Matthew 7, verse 15. It says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep clothing, but inwardly they are, inwardly they are ravening woods. You shall know them by their fruits, the men gather the grapes or thorns or things or thistles. Even so, every good tree bring forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bring forth evil fruit. We say today that one truly needs to look, truly needs to look and see today what is truly being, the true word of God being, being, being spoke. We are saying today that if the false prophets is saying that that you can abide in sin and that Christ he that Christ he will still love that Christ he will still love you. We are saying today that that is just that that is just uh, that is just that is just a lie. We are saying today that we are not going to try to be smooth things, but we are here to truly tell you the true word of the true the true word of God. It says. Wherefore, by the fruits you shall know them. Now everyone that saith to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter to the kingdom of heaven, but he that do the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many one have done many wonderful have done many wonderful works. It doesn't matter how much works try it doesn't matter how much works that one tries to do in in one's flesh we are saying today that if you are still that if you are still in sin we are saying today that christ he that christ he does not know you it says and then i press unto them i never knew you depart from me ye that work ye that work ye that work and we are saying today that the only thing that is separating you only thing that is separating you from god is your sin we are saying today that one truly has to Come and truly be baptized, not only of the um, 
not only of the um, water, but once you have the baptized of the of the of the Spirit of Christ, also we are saying today that one cannot be no longer abide in sin if they want to truly have fellowship with Christ. It says, "Oh, that's it right there." It says, "Many will say to me that they, Lord, Lord, have not prophesied thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many for wonderful works." And then I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. We are saying today that if one is still of, that if one is still uh, abiding in sin, we are saying today that one needs to truly come and repent. One truly have to come and repent. One truly have to come and repent. One truly have to come and repent today because we are saying that Christ, that if one die in that sin today, then we're saying today that you will not see God's face in peace. We are saying today we are here to try to save one's souls in these last days. If one can truly have grace of God, to truly hear the words of God being being um being um spoke in in these in these last days and and we are saying that we are not like the false we are not like the false prophet that just like to just speak things but we are saying today that that we are truly being doers of the word that we are speaking in in these last days. Amen that's all the words we have to you we would like to bring for another message at this time. We thank the Lord for this opportunity today, men and brethren, that the Lord has given us to stand up and preach the word of God to you. It's a lot of false prophets in this last day. They try to preach the word of God. They try to act. They looking for the soul for God. But they hiding behind that vest or behind that clothes just to profit the people. But today we're here to tell you the truth. We're here to try to open your eyes, to warn you from all those for profit, to let you know you've got to uh, stay away from them, to let you know that today, if you don't repent truly for your sin, because repentance is not just saying that I'm, I, I'm tired of lying. But tomorrow I'm going to get up again and lie more. No, repent is when you repent for all everything you, you have done in your life and you not doing it no more. That's what a true repentance, that's what the brother was trying to brought to you today. The first prophet, they don't know the truth. They act like they know God, but they don't know God. Just look at their life. Look at how they've been lost in after your daughters and, your, and, their, and their church. Look at how they've been hanging to get your money. Because they don't know nothing about the truth. The truth never set them free. That's why you yourself, you're not free. And today, by the grace of God, the Lord has sent us to, let, to help you, to call you for, for that freedom a freedom that help you to live a life free from sin. This is a word that the the, past, the, the first prophet and this word don't understand. They tell you you are sinners saved by grace. They tell you you can commit sin as long as you want because Jesus has died for you. But why Jesus was died? Why did Jesus Christ die in the cross? He was to help you to save you from sin but if you save from sin why are you still in sin because after the lord has washed you from your sin you can no longer no longer live in sin but the first prophet tell you it's okay because the prof first prophet is not gonna help you to be saved because himself he's not gonna be saved but he's gonna try to make you happy. He's gonna try to get on your feet so you can give him his money. But today, men and brethren, we're here to tell you the truth. We're here to tell you about Christ, the true Christ. That Christ that once needs to have and his last day if you wanna be saved. But this Christ wants you to live a life free from sin. For you to be saved, you need to stay away from sin. But men in this world, they love sin too much. 
They love lasting too much. They love lying too much. They love cursing too much. They can stay away from sin. That's why it's so hard for them to hear the truth. That's why it's so hard for them to repent truly from their sin. They're gonna, they gonna be happy to go to the beach. They're gonna be happy to go uh, everywhere where their flesh gonna be happy. But to hear the word of God and this last day, men don't wanna do that no more. That's why we're here today, to let you know if you don't repent, it's gonna be bad for you. To let you know if you don't repent, it's a judgment coming for you. That judgment gonna burn you. That judgment you will not wish to have. But you gotta skip all this if you want to repent today. Repent, not just to say, okay, now I'm repent. But you gotta repent for the rest of your life. You gotta live a life free from sin. You gotta stop everything that you used to do in a time past. You gotta stop cursing. You gotta stop lusting. You gotta stop being, being a, a, a problem for your neighbor. You gotta stop hating your neighbor. And something that men and the sword, they don't have no power over. They, uh, the, uh, Satan put them in a bend. But today, by the grace of God, men and brethren, the Lord has given us power over those things. Now, if we see, if we live a life free from sin, it's not because we did something, but it's because the Lord Jesus Christ was died to give us grace to live a life free from sin. We truly repent for our sin and the Lord give us power. Now, like the Bible was saying, we satisfy with our life. We satisfy with our one wife. We not lie no more. We don't curse no more. We don't smoke no more. Not because we want, we, we did something in our flesh, more not, but because we put our flesh to death daily and the Lord give us grace to overcome those desire. The desire that the Bible is saying that brought judgment in every man's flesh. But today, man of God, I'm telling you, it's better you repent from your sin because without that, it's gonna be terrible at the, at the end of the life. At the end of your life, it's gonna be terrible. You don't know when it's gonna be the end of your life. It might be tonight, it might be tomorrow, it might be in 10 years, but today, if you hear the word of God come from the brethren, come from the sins of God, don't harden your heart, but open your heart and hear the word of God. The word that's gonna help you to be saved in this last day. Amen. Amen. We're Church of the Living God. We are here in your neighborhood today preaching the word of God to you that have an ear to hear today. We hope that you are edified with some of the words that you heard spoken by our other ministers. We're in your neighborhood today to preach unto you God's true plan of salvation for your life. Like the other ministers were saying, we don't preach for money or anything of that sort, but we're preaching for your salvation. We preach and repent from the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So many false prophets have gone out into the world today and they preaching, come as you are. But we're saying that's not what we're out here doing today. We're not out here to preach, come as you are. We're not out here to preach, God loves everybody in sin. We're not out here to preach that today. But we're here in your neighborhood preaching, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. We saying in these last days, men and brethren, so many people, they don't know what God's will is for them in their life. They don't know why they're here on this earth. But I heard the last minister saying that the will of God is your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication, and that every one of you know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and in honor. That's what God's will is for you in this last day. God's will is not for you to try to find your life in this world. That's not why God put you here. 
but God put you here to, as it were, offer up that body as a living sacrifice. The scripture speaks about in the book of Romans, holy and acceptable before God. That's what the Lord is looking for from every one of us in these last days. And we, we have a couple of scriptures that we want to go to also. Just proving what the other ministers were just speaking about. We want to go to a couple of scriptures and we're going to be closing down. But we, we want to look at the book of Ephesians chapter 5. The word of God says in Ephesians chapter 5, in verses 1, be you therefore followers of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and has given himself for an offering and a oh, sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling Savior. But fornication and all uncleanness oh, or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becoming saints. The word of God is saying, let these things not be once named among you as becoming saints. Now the false prophet, he'll tell you, God loves you. Just come as you are. You can come in your fornication. He'll tell you, you can come in your homosexuality. You can come as you are. That's how the false prophets teach. But we're not preaching that today. The word of God says, let these things not once be named among you as becoming saints. The word of God says, fornication, all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becoming saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Now the flesh out in the world, these false prophets, they'll tell you, well, God loves everybody. Just come as you are and he's going to receive you. But I hear the word of God saying that no whoremonger, no fornicator, nobody that's committing uh, having sex outside of a lawful marriage, none of these fornicators or adulterers, no liars, no profane person, none of these kind of wicked people, the scripture says, is going to have any kind of inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Now that's the word of God. Now the false prophet, they'll tell you, sure, God, he's going to receive you as you are. But the word of God is telling a different story. The word of God is saying that you ain't going to have no part in God's kingdom if you still abiding in your sins. The word of God says here, let no man deceive you. Now this is what we're saying. These false prophets, this is what their whole purpose is, is to deceive you that you can go straight to hell because they're going to tell you that God, he loves you. You don't have to repent. You don't have to come out of the sin. But the scriptures are saying, don't let no man deceive you. It don't matter what kind of uh, education they supposedly received or if they call themselves doctor this or doctor that. It don't matter. The word of God says, let no man deceive you with vain words. It's just vain words telling you that you can come to God in sin. It's impossible. The scripture says, uh, holiness without shall no man see the Lord. You got to be holy to see God's face in peace. The word of God says, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be you therefore not partakers with them, for you are sometimes darkness but now are you light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. Now the word of God is saying, you are sometimes darkness. See, when you come to Christ, this is what the false prophet, he never going to teach you these kind of things because he wants you to feel comfortable in your sins because the false prophet, he's not into trying to save souls. The false prophet is into, he just wants your money. That's all the false prophet is interested in. But we're saying, he's not going to tell you that you're supposed to be out of, you're supposed to come out of the sin. He's going to try to make you comfortable in the sin. But the word of God says, you are sometimes darkness, but now are you light in the Lord. You're supposed to be a new person now. You're supposed to be born again of God's Holy Spirit. All those old things that you used to do before you came to Christ, you're supposed to be a new creature now. 
the scripture speaks about in Galatians, I believe it's chapter 5 or 6, it speaks about the works of the spirit and the works of the flesh. We're going to go there and look at this right quickly and just bear it out because the false prophet, they don't want you to know about these things. They're going to just tell you, yeah, come as you are, no problem. The Lord, he's going to receive you just the way you are. But we're saying that's a lie. Amen. The word of God says, don't let no man deceive you about this matter. The word of God says here in Galatians chapter, chapter 5 and verses 16, the word of God says this, I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now this is what the word of God is saying. If you truly been born again, like so many people love to say that they born again and filled with, with God, Holy Spirit, but yet the flesh is still in fornication. We saying if you truly walking in God's spirit, the word of God says you're not going to be fulfilling the lust of the flesh. But the flesh in the world today, they done got comfortable thinking that they can come to God as they are. But we saying that's not so in these last days. The word of God says walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other. So you can't try to serve God and still be in sin at the same time. The word of God says, these are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication. This is a long list of the works of the flesh that you're supposed to be, they're supposed to be long gone once you come to Christ. We're saying once you come to Christ, you're not supposed to be still abiding in these kind of works. It says, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication. So we're saying, how many of you are still in adultery and fornication? We're saying that, that pretty much covers the majority of the world. They think that that's okay to be in adultery and fornication. But we're saying that these are the works of the flesh. And if you are abiding in these works, you will not enter God's kingdom. Amen. The word of God says, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envying, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. All these things that we just named up, the word of God says, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now that's the word of God, man and brother. We're saying a false prophet, they're going to tell you a different story. They're going to tell you, yeah, you can inherit God's kingdom. Don't come as you are. The Lord, he's going to receive you just the way you are. But that's a lie. The word of God said, don't be deceived by these vain words that the flesh is going to be telling you in these false synagogues. The word of God says, they shall not inherit the kingdom of God, but the fruit of the spirit. Now these are the works that you should be abiding in once you've truly been born of God's Holy Spirit. Now, so many people like to say, that they're born of, in, of God and they fill with the Holy Spirit. But we're saying, are all these works in your tabernacle? The Word of God says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lust thereof. We saying, now this is what a true Christian is going to be all about. Crucifying the lusts and desires in his flesh. Now so many people love to say that they've been born of God, filled with the Holy Spirit. But are you crucifying them lusts and desires in your flesh? Or are you just drinking sin down like water? We saying, examine yourselves. The Word of God says, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another and envying one another. We have one more scripture. We're not going to be long, many brother, but we have another scripture we want to look at. And uh, we're going to go back to Ephesians chapter 5 because we didn't finish there. And we're going to be closing it up. We hope you're edified with some of the words that were spoken from our other ministers. We hope that the Lord give you some ears to hear the word of God. But back in Ephesians chapter 5, look at what the word of God says. 
you want to look at let's look at verse verse 9 for the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth proving what is acceptable unto the Lord now this is what the word of God is saying the fruit of the spirit is going to be in all goodness and faith proving what is acceptable unto the Lord see everything is not acceptable like the flesh like to try to say in these false churches the false prophet they're going to tell you it don't matter what you're involved in as long as you pay your tithes as long as you have your perfect attendance you're okay but we're saying it's not so the word of God says here have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness now this is what the word of God is saying but rather reprove them for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret but all things are reproved that are reproved are made manifest by the light for whatsoever does make manifest is light wherefore he said awake thou that sleepest arise from the dead and Christ shall give thee light see that you work, walk circumspectly not as fools but as wise redeeming the time for the days are evil we say in these last days men and brethren the days are very evil we even heard a previous minister saying in his uh, exhortation that in the last times perilous times are going to be here and we saying these times are very perilous men and brothers men are just lovers of their own selves they don't even care about God anymore and when you see one in these false churches not because they love God or because they love holiness they love uh, walking in righteousness they're in these false churches because they want to feel comfortable in their sin because a false prophet is going to lie to them all day long and make them feel comfortable and make them feel like they can know God in sin but we're saying it's impossible the word of God says Walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore be you not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. We say, men and brethren, understand what God's will is for you in these last days. Don't be deceived by all these false prophets that's going to lie to you in these false synagogues. They're going to just try to rip off the congregation. That's all they're about is just filling their pockets with money but we're saying don't be deceived by these as where the scripture speaks of them as wolves in sheep's clothing because that's what these false prophets are they're not interested in your salvation they don't care that they're sending everybody to hell all they're interested in is your money that's all the false prophet is interested in but we're saying we're not here for your money many brother we're not interested in your money but we're interested in your soul we're here to save souls. That's what this ministry is all about. So we're saying we hope that you have faith and hear the word of God as it's going forth by the true ministers of God. We're saying we're not out here on our own accord, but we've been sent by Christ to redeem the world back to God. That's what our ministry is all about. And that's why we're out here in your neighborhood today. We hope that some of you have faith and can hear the words that were spoken today. The word of God says in the day that you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts. That's what we're saying today, men and brethren. Don't harden your hearts. Repent, the scripture says, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. We closing up, men and brethren. We hope that you are edified with some of the words that you heard spoken by our ministers today. We're saying we are church of the living God. Our church is located on 3015 South 54th Street off of Causeway Boulevard. We saying we hope that we can see some of you there, we can have fellowship with you, and that God can give you grace to come out from among this evil, wicked, adulterous generation and truly have fellowship with us. Because the scripture says truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. God bless you.